good day. I am Dr. Anaita Udwadia Hegde. I am a pediatric neurologist affiliated with the SRCC Children's Hospital managed by Nara and Health. On the occasion of National Epilepsy Day, 17th of November, also known as Purple Day amongst us, uh, I would like to discuss a few aspects of epilepsy, particularly in children. Um, what exactly is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a tendency of the brain to throw seizures. A seizure is actually the event which takes place. It's abnormal electricity animating from the brain as a result of which the body might shake, lose sensorium or you have different sensations. It's usually very short lasting and um, you may lose consciousness during that transient episode. When the body has a tendency to have repeated such episodes, it is considered as epilepsy. So while you have febrile convulsions or febrile seizures, which is maybe the commonest entity noted in children, that's when they have fever, they throw a seizure. Those are not considered as epilepsy because there is a provoking factor. Uh, it's caused by the fever. It's triggered by an uh, external stimulus as a result of which the child is throwing the seizure. But when you have no provoking factor and out of the blue, the child throws repeated or multiple episodes of unprovoked seizures, that is when we have um, epilepsy. Now, epilepsy is far more common than you think it is. Okay, roughly about three per thousand is the incidence of epilepsy. Uh, in children, particularly, the causes of them are those who have had some sort of damage to the brain for various reasons. So it could be due to birth, it could be due to be neonatal period, uh, it could be infections which have left a scar on the brain, strokes from the past, um, any other entity where there is some damage or scar or um, lesion on the brain. However, there is also a, a percentage of people, who, children who can have epilepsy with nothing on the MRIs. Okay, so if you have a problem on the MRI and a scar on the MRI, our drugs that we give for the epilepsy are not cures, they're treatments. We try to control the seizures or we try to keep them in abeyance. But the primary pathology still sits on the MRI and thus these are the children who might be a little more difficult to treat, a little more difficult to control over a period of time because the cause is still sitting there and if we don't address the cause or we don't treat the cause, then uh, taking away that epilepsy becomes that much more difficult. But if your MRI is normal and the child is absolutely normal and the child has no underlying damage, scar, lesion, nothing on his scans, there's a very good chance that uh, with medication this epilepsy will go and hopefully the child should be free of it lifelong. So, the, the first thing or the first anxiety that a parent has when you say, oh, your child has epilepsy or your child has seizures is, doc, what can I do? How can I make it better for him? Um, I would say 70% of seizures do not last more than a minute or a minute and a half. Okay, so that anxiety and fear that goes with this is very ill-founded and the short seizures do not usually cause any significant damage to the brain. It's the long ones, the ones that go five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour. They are the ones which have a tendency to go into uh, prolonged seizures, repeated seizures. And yes, they may actually cause uh, long-term transient or even long-term damage to the brain. So the single most important thing that a parent has or any caregiver, meaning school teachers, educational institutes, etc., where you are empowered and in control of the epilepsy is learn how to handle it at home. You do not need to rush to a hospital every time the child throws a seizure if you learn how to use the spray. So we have a nasal spray which is available in the market and when the child throws the seizure, if the seizure lasts more than two to three minutes, we recommend you insert the spray into the nostrils. Your doctor will tell you the dose that needs to be given and if you do that, almost 97% of seizures will get controlled with just the spray. 
a very small percentage may not get control with the spray and yes those are the ones who need to then subsequently go to a hospital where a doctor will uh, abort the seizure uh, as soon as they reach the intensive or the casualty. So if parents are comfortable and familiar with the spray and the school teachers and caregivers can do the same, we are automatically far more relaxed because we know we are not going to end up with any long-term sequelae or long-term damage secondary to this epilepsy and we adjust our medication accordingly. Medication is put on those children who have epilepsy, that means two or more unprovoked seizures or a tendency to have them. And this medication is not like cough cold medication for three days or five days or 10 days, but this medication is for many years. We are looking at two to four years of seizure free period, indicating that once you start medicine, if you don't get any seizures for the next two to four years, uh, depending on the clinical picture in the child, the EEG, which is the encephalogram that we use to study the electrical activity of the brain and um, the response to the medication, uh, we may consider taking down the medication after this prolonged period. The idea is to take everybody off medication as far as possible. Okay, there are a few people who might need it for many, many years or prolonged periods, but on an average, everyone will be given a trial to come off the medication and hopefully a large number will. So once you start treating epilepsy, 60 to 65% of them will get controlled very easily with a single drug and will be able to come off medication as we discussed after a few years. 30 to 35% of children will be difficult to manage. This is the same statistics for adults as well as for children. And these are the ones who have something on the brain, something on the MRI, um, either some congenital malformation or some perinatal, natal, uh, birth related or after birth damage to the brain for whatever reasons, which has left a scar. And because the scar isn't going, the seizures are not coming under control. So the aim of treatment again over there is readjust, get the medication, uh, we want minimum seizures and minimum medications. We do realize that medicines is not the answer for everything. So we try to balance so that the child's development, cognition and intellect should not get affected either by the seizures or by the uh, effects of the medication. So for such patients, we have other facilities which are there for epilepsy. We have something called the ketogenic diet. Uh, it's, I'm sure you're all aware of it because it's a fad at the moment and everyone's using it for weight loss. But here, the ketogenic diet is particularly for children with epilepsy and we found that the ketones calms the brain as a result of which their seizures settle, their cognition, intellect and interaction improves and we treat it like another drug. It will continue for two to four years and if and when the child is seizure free, we will take down the ketogenic diet over a few years. If that doesn't work, we have the vagal nerve stimulator. It's a small appliance which is there like a pacemaker of the heart. It sits over here with a little coil sitting on your vagus nerve in your neck and it gives a little current up to the brain and thereby uh, protecting the brain when the seizure activity starts. Very effective as well as another option. Then the next option you have is surgery, which is what we call epilepsy surgery, which needs an entire team to work you up for the surgery. But it's a facility that we have. And uh, these are for those patients which have something sitting in the brain or some scar or some damage in the brain in one particular area where if we can resect that piece, we would be able to make the patient seizure free. It's one of the few curative uh, procedures that are there for children with intractable epilepsy, whereas many of the others are treatments and not cures. So now that we have understood a little about epilepsy, what causes the epilepsy, a little on the statistics, how to handle it or manage it at home so that parents are empowered and don't feel helpless uh, under the circumstances, uh, when we consider medication, how we plan our medication, when do we think of taking off this medication? Uh, there are a few things I think parents and caregivers need to keep in mind. One is uh, compliance is very important in the management of, ep of epilepsy. You need to be regular. 
You cannot afford at any cost to miss medication. You cannot afford to be lax and laid back and oh, instead of five o'clock, let's give it a 10 o'clock today, it doesn't work. We don't have to be rigid to the point of disturbing uh, the day and the activities of the child, but we need to stick to a timetable. Usually doses are twice a day. They can be sometimes once a day. In, for the pediatric population, we have syrups and we have tablets. We have tablets which are scored, meaning you can break them in half for dosage point of view. And otherwise, we should try to use syrups if the tablet is not scored. But timing is important. Half an hour to one hour before or after is OK. But we can't afford to miss a dose or double dose the child suddenly when mom decides that she's realized she's missed the morning dose. So compliance is very important. Timing of medication is very important. Uh, precipitance, common question I'm always asked, Doc, what brings it on? What can I do to see that it doesn't happen? Uh, the common precipitance, particularly in children, is infections. Okay, so you'll do, you will notice that this rate of seizures go up when they have a concomitant infection. Excessive emotions, stress, anxiety, fear, happy, scared, anxious, any of those excessive emotions, exhaustion, um, physical or emotional, stress uh, in particular, and single most important is lack of sleep. Okay, whereas in adults you have the alcohol, the caffeine, and um, the other stuff which is there, which doesn't come in for children, flashing lights in a few epilepsies, but not all, but lack of sleep. And this is one thing I would like to emphasize that those children who have epilepsy, parents must see that they get adequate sleep depending on their age to try and make the picture better. It usually doesn't happen with one thing. It happens with a combination of multiple. So which is the common days? Birthdays, festivals, weddings, someone's wedding and we are going out for dinner, first day of school, exam time, sports day, concert day. I'm all ready. I get up early in the morning. I'm so excited. I'm being made up and go to school. I stand on stage, get excited, come home, photographs taken, parents came to see me in school that night high chance of, of, of throwing the seizure. Now, we can't control everything that happens in everyday life. But yes, if we've woken up early, we see that we nap in the afternoon. If we're going, going to bed late because there's a wedding in the family, we see that we've rested in the afternoon so that we are well taken care of. So these few things are in your hand to adjust, but still not totally to change. So regular medication, there are no contraindications to epilepsy. Your child can eat everything, can do everything, can go everywhere. The only restriction is water bodies, and that even it should be with supervision. So swimming is not a total no-no. If mom or dad or someone can be with the child in the water and manage them, it can happen. Because it's good that a child should learn how to protect himself in water for later life. But if it's unsupervised, water bodies are a no. It's not just swimming pools, lakes, ponds, rivers, tubs, buckets, anything. You need to be careful. A bathroom door should not be locked when we go for a bath so that someone is there to protect you. Other than that, no restriction. Diet can be full, activity should be normal, and you should not restrict your child from other activities. In fact, if you have confidence in managing your child, the school teacher, the principal, and the caregiver will get confidence in managing them, and we move on. So I would say at the end, um, one small thing, when the child has a seizure, you will have learned, place them to the side. Do not put chappals, onions, smelling salts, or anything around them. Absolute no-no. Leave them and give them space to breathe. Do not crowd around them. Loosen their clothes. Remember, this is an electrical activity from the brain. It is not in your hands to put it on or put it off. It will stop on its own within a few seconds to minutes. Let the child have the seizure. After the seizure, the child might be a little drowsy, cranky, irritable. Let him sleep it off. Don't forcefully try to wake them. And once he recovers from it and he wakes up, he should be fine and the day will go on as normal. So given that we've explained the everyday uh, activities of children with epilepsy and what we can do and not do, I would like one take home message at the end of the day. Epilepsy is a condition just like some children have diabetes, some children have asthma. This is a chronic 
a medical condition. It is not contagious. It is very rarely hereditary. Most of the time it is not. And these children should not be ostracized, stigmatized or separated in any way from normal children or other children in their schools. I appeal particularly to school teachers, principals and educational boards. Make that child feel in first don't be scared of epilepsy yourself. Okay, just because it looks unpleasant doesn't mean it's it's bad or wrong. Make that child feel included, confident and part of the class or part of the community. Give the make an attitude or an atmosphere which is so positive and inclusive that a parent shouldn't feel scared to tell you that my child has epilepsy, please look out for him. Learn how to handle a seizure. Learn how to give the spray. Give the parent the confidence to believe that you can handle the problems in school if anything happens. Put an infrastructure in to do it properly and make that child feel as if he belongs to the same society with no distinction made against him as if he were one who didn't have epilepsy. Equal to any other child in your school or your class. With that, I would like to thank you and end this program. And I hope this has been informative to you with regards to a little more understanding of what is epilepsy, how to help your child, how to manage a situation. And I hope I've been able to take away a little bit of the stigma, the fear, and the concern you might have with dealing with such a child. Thank you.